Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Yahya Ithawi. I'm a pediatrician and neonatology uh, consultant. And today I'm going to talk about um, premature uh, neonatal uh, uh, care plan or premature care plan. And my objectives in this short talk is to define it and then talks about its uh, components and uh, who is uh, the healthcare providers involvement and what is content and, uh, uh, and we'll talk short about the information that we should provide to parents who expected premature therapy and then how to do follow-up and if a, a revisit is needed. So what is a premature care plan? Is a, a format or a process or a consult to document and monitor the interaction and the collaboration between the obstetrician, the neonatologist, and the parents of expected a premature um, uh, delivery or premature baby expected that will be born somewhere between 23 and 32 weeks of uh, gestational age. So the expectations, the limitations, the difficulties, and possibly the outcomes and monitorings are discussed between these three parties on a weekly basis. Um, the reason why weekly because each week's different in gestational age has different uh, care need, different complications, and different uh, outcomes. And uh, by meet, the meeting of these uh, three parties, there will be like uh, an approximation of. Uh, uh, a reasonable expectation, a realistic expectations between obstetrician, neonatologist, and uh, uh, the parent. Because uh, the uh, obstetrician point of view about neonatal care is, is, is totally different from that of neonatology and maybe different from that of uh, parents. So, the premature care plan is a kind of interaction between parents, obstetrician, neonatologist to have a good count of the baby and put a future plan. Now, we will talk what is the component of the premature care plan. And, um, the components depend on the party who is involved. So there is obstetric part, neonatal part, and parent part. So the obstetrician part is to initiate the process. Once a couple with expected premature uh, delivery uh, consult or visit the hospital or the uh, uh, clinic, the obstetrician name with his and or her uh, level of, of, of seniority should be uh, documented with the date and time. And uh, the consultant or the specialist obstetrician should write the reason for uh, the, the consult or starting process is just antenatal consult to talk with the parent and uh, deliver the information uh, to them and set the uh, expectation, the complications and difficulties. And also uh, after he or she does that, uh, the obstetrician should give a, a, a document, uh, some maternal biography. These biographies um, you know, include, but not limited to the age, the gravida, the para, the abortion, the death, history of death, uh, especially at uh, fetus or neonatal periods, history of stillbirth, number of live birth, blood group, uh, uh, group B streptococcal uh, screening if it has been done, uh, or um, if, uh, urine culture or previous history of, of, of GBA status. Uh, vaccinations history, um, uh, serology history, all should be documented. Also, if there is a past medical history or past obstetric history, there are various. If there is medications, um, if, there is, if there is a history of, if there is, is the, uh, um, is there is a premature labor or uh, the prematurity is because we're doing um, inducing the labor because of, of maternal complications. If there is maternal fever or there is trauma date and time, if there is a preeclampsia or just pregnancy induced hyper hypertension, is the um, uh, 
the obstetrician will use magnesium sulfate as a treatment or even as a, a neuroprotective mechanism for the expected babies. If there is any abruption, oligo, or hydro, if there is any malformation, if there is diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2, or it's a pregnancy, whether the patient is on insulin, or whether the insulin is just on pregnancy or, or uh, even prior pregnancy, is on, only on diet. Any tobacco, alcohol, drug, uh, antibiotics, steroid, and so on. The obstetrician, so maternal biography, the history, and also should include the uh, fetal assessment. The obstetrician should provide an estimate of fetal weight, whether there is intrauterine growth restriction or not, and ab um, uh, abnormal diastolic flow. And the obstetrician shouldn't say normal or abnormal. There should be a numbers, absence, reverse, or normal diastolic flow. And should be in three arteries, uterine, umbilicus, and middle cerebral. Because if it's, the uterine is, is, is abnormal, like absent or reverse diastolic flow, that means there is a maternal medical conditions affecting the pregnancy. But if the uterine artery doublers are normal, but they are umbilicus, that means you have a placental problem. Uh, either way, whether it's uterine or umbilicus, if middle cerebral artery is normal, even if the others are compromised, that means the baby is compensating. But if the middle cerebral artery become abnormal, that means the child is suffering and probably the delivery should be imminent. Uh, the assessment should include an adult fetal information, some measurements, the presence of uh, uh, screening, and uh, whether it's a chemical or it's a, um, chemical tests or it's a ultrasound or other imaging, um, including assessment for possible abnormalities. Um, we should also include um, social history uh, and it depends on the country that you're practicing whether that patient is local or non-local whether it has insurance or has no insurance and uh, for example in UAA whether if, if it's non-local then probably you need to ask if there is a family support or if you're in another country uh, there is a family support or not, if there is any other social issues and information like divorce or family disturbance or any other things that should be included in the, um, because it will affect the outcome of the neonatal care. And then uh, after the obstetrician filled his or her part, then we move to neonatology part. The uh, neonatologist should give an overview uh, discussion with the parents about morbidities, treatments, and the uh, neontologist should answer the uh, uh, questions of parent and maybe offering a tour to visit the NICU and uh, uh, the parent can see um, some of the patients or you know the setting, the visiting policy and so on. The overview should include the following. So if I am uh, expecting a baby, I need to know what is the will be survival rate and whether or not my child will have severe complications. And when we say severe complications, we're talking about the ability of child to walk or to see or to hear or, 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 or to think. And always, always the neonatologist and even the obstetrician should talk with the parent about the uncert uncertainty of dating. Because whether we're using last ministerial period or ultrasound or any other tools, there is plus minus. So we parent of 23 weeks should be informed that it might be 22 weeks and it might be 24 weeks to our best estimate is 23, but the, uh, the date and uh, is un uncertain and therefore because the date and gestation are certain the prognosis and the outcome whether it's a, a mortality or morbidity is also uncertain the parent has to know whether the NICU team will be uh, available at the delivery and whether or not the resuscitation will be provided a written clear information in the uh, parent level of language, not only in their language, but the level of language. So you can try it like level one English language to parents who are not scholar. So you need maybe level three or level four and so on in Arabic and other languages. And the NICU team should write the recommendations after the visit. 
the type of the resuscitation, the level of the resuscitation, the transport if needed, the other facilities or other disciplines that might be involved in the care. And at the end, the obstetrician or the neonatologist should document when uh, the uh, next visit will be. And usually it will should after seven days because the prognosis and the complication and even the management and expectation is different between each gestational agent. Um, the neonatologist should inform the, about each one by one, each morbidities and its treatment of the risk of RDS. What is the possibility that the other baby might having a tube in the lung and whether they would could be connected to a breathing machine or not? A consent for blood and blood product should be taken. What is the risk of chronic lung disease or need or oxygen at 32 weeks gestational age, 36 weeks gestational age? The risk of uh, retinopathy or prematurity and when the eye doctor will see the baby? And the risk of mental disability, deafness, blindness, cerebral palsy. Risk of infection and infection control policy should be documented. The parents should be asked whether they want to start formula or not. What are the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage and what will happen uh, to the bowel if uh, even with the most careful team and uh, slow increment of milk, possibility of nasty inflammation of the bowel, that's called necrotizing enterocolitis, should be discussed with the parent. And the parent, if the parents are willing to do breastfeeding, then there might be interest for lactation consultant to help them establish the feed and uh, make the success uh, uh, of uh, giving en enough amount of expressed breast milk. What other plaques um, the, uh, the neonatologist should discuss is about breastfeeding. What is the benefit? What is the risk? And how we do express breast milk, how we store it, and how the child, the uh, new family member, will use it. Um, the, they should know the location of the NICU and how far it's from the labor room. They should know the visiting policy for themselves and for the extended family members and of course the infection control policy and what is the uh, administrative procedures that will be done in the ICU. They need to know how long their child will stay in the nursery and of course any other outstanding issues social or medical and the parent should be giving enough time to answer these questions. And finally, an ICU will team will write the recommendation. What will happen after delivery? Whether they will attend or not? Whether the resuscitation will be provided or not? Or if the resuscitation is not provided, whether they will provide comfort care or tender loving care or, uh, for their child? And if the uh, comfort care will be provided, then what is type and what is level? And now we go to the parent part. The parent has the right to ask questions, but they have to follow. Uh, not uh, this is a spelling, it's a recommendations. And then they should be provided with a written information. And after discussing with the uh, obstetrician and neonatologist, the parent should have uh, realistic expectations. If the child is uh, 26 weeks, then a premature care plan is not enough. Probably we should do some thing called advanced care plan. An advanced care plan is a little bit different from premature care plan. Is the um, um, premature care plan can be done just by documentation without need for meeting. But with the advanced care plan, a face-to-face -face meeting between these three parties should be set on a regular basis. But if 26 weeks and, and greater, then a premature care plan should be appropriate. Uh, making sure that the uh, care plan and advanced care plan is documented, whether it's on, on file or in an electronic patient record. The follow-up date and time should be documented and usually it's every seven days. Who will do it? The obstetrician consultant during working day, the neonatology consultant during working day, and neonatology uh, or, uh, and obstetrician resident after the working hours. The obstetrician consultant and neonatology consultant should review the, all the after um, uh, 
the after hours uh, premature care plan that have been done by previous days uh, premature um, uh, specialist obstetrician and gynecologist to see if the uh, standard expectation have been met. Otherwise, it might be need, need to be revised and revisit the parent and the obstetrician. How? How we do that? It's through documentation. If it's a premature care plan, and if it's then, if it's advanced care plan for babies 26 and below, is documentation and face-to-face -face meeting. Documentation can be in charts, patient chart, or can be in um, electronic patient record, and it should not be a free text. Parent question, expectation, concern need to be met, answered, and documented, not in a free text. Any expected circumstances should be reviewed as early as possible, including administrative and other um, issues and um, support care. Uh, this is an example of um, a handout or a written uh, piece of paper that can be provided in, in both Arabic and English, and um, it, it tells the parent uh, what is um, uh, uh, they're expecting, what's the percentages, what's expected complication, what's expected uh, length of stay, and what's the percentages of survival of their parent. Now, this is an international figure, but you need to change to your local uh, result, and therefore a collection of, uh, of data and information and the predictors of, of performance is very important to write these numbers and need to be updated with the advance of care. Um, this is um, an example of a premature uh, care plan uh, in a, a file chart in a document. So you can see that the other is obstetrician part, and uh, the obstetrician should fill the first part, the biography, and then the pregnancy complications and patients, and here it's continue. And then after that, the neonatal part starts, and you can see the details that we've discussed all here is documented. And also there is a, a possibility of uh, free text and then filling and, and, and just ticking. And if this there is less than 26 weeks, uh, um, it should be advanced. There should be a meeting prior writing the plan between the obstetrician and the neonatologist and preferably with the presence of parent. Um, um, also follow-up meeting should be documented the neonatology consultant should sign in addition to the beginning signature of, or, um, uh, of the uh, obstetrician and also the parent should be uh, signing the form. Now this is an example of electronic patient record of premature care plan and it's again including the obstetrician part, the neonatal part and the recommendation of the overview. And by this, I conclude what we call it premature care plan. It's a process or a tool that make the communication between a parent, obstetrician, and the uh, uh, neonatologist uh, for expected premature baby to be documented and followed. And that is a very well document that it will decrease the uh, complaint the miscommunication between obstetric and neonatology and also decrease the complaint and, uh, of the parent and decrease their stress well, and their difficult time of having very sick baby. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Uh, my name is Yahya Ithawi. I'm a pediatrician and uh, uh, neonatology consultant. And um, in next few videos also I will discuss the next step after premature care plan, which is neonatal uh, golden hour, and hopefully uh, the third episode about the care of sick premature, premature baby and sick term baby. Thank you very much and have a good day.